Now in today's video, we're taking a look at the Synology DS725 Plus. And this is gonna give you enormous storage capacity to store all your photos, videos, uh, precious documents, back them up and have them locally stored. And guess what? If you'd like to be able to have a backup also on the cloud, you could do that as well. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And for those of you who are Plex users or would like to get into Plex, the media server solution, then this is gonna give you the ability to do that as well. What I really love about the solution is that it has a combination of being able to support both solid state, non-solid state, and also NVMEs all in this small package. Let's get right to it. Now, before taking a closer look at the unit and then also the software that comes with it, uh, let's talk about some of the specs. Now, this is a two bay NAS. It basically has two storage solutions that you're gonna be able to see that are gonna support both standard drives as well as solid state drives. It also has the ability to support two NVMEs. And the NVMEs, again, those are those little memory cards that actually work as storage as well. So it gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to the different forms of storage that you can have. Now, this is gonna have serious, serious writing capabilities when it comes to the read and write speeds. And then also has great network connectivity, 2.5 gigabit network connectivity. Now, this is gonna have built-in, right out of the box, photo management, data protection, surveillance solutions. It has all these type of capabilities. And I have to say that, the application, when you when I show you kind of like the walkthrough of the, how things work, this is one of the simplest uh, solutions that you can implement. This, let's face it, a network appliance like this, a NAS, could be intimidating for many people who have never worked with a solution like this. And it could be very technical. In this case, Synology has done a really nice job of making it super simple so that anyone with little to no experience can actually set one up. So if you've never done this before, don't be intimidated by, again, the technology itself. Just think about all the features that you're seeing here and if it makes sense for you, right? So you basically have also great capabilities to expand this up to 140 terabytes. And you're probably wondering, how is this possible? Because it only has two bays. Well, as you extend, it has a port where you can extend it to another appliance where you can extend it up to 140 terabytes. Now, what I love about these solutions and the way I use them in my home is for the storage of all our content that we create on YouTube, all of our documentation, and I actually use a combination of two solutions which you can do with this. You can just store locally, right? But then I also have a secure backup that I back up to the cloud. So if something were to happen to my home, I don't lose all of my digital assets because they're stored in multiple places. You could choose to be 100% local as well. It's really up to you as to what you wanna do. Now, the one thing about this is you basically have also, as I mentioned, the ability to have 2.25 SATA drives, or um, in this case, SSD drives, or you can have the SATA drives, which are gonna be your 3.5s. So that basically means that, and you'll see them, you can store and have different types of storage medium that you can use, and with that comes different speed. I prefer SSDs personally because of the speed that you get out of them. But in this unit, you're gonna see I have some uh, platter still, some traditional SATA drives in here as well. So you're looking at a lot of flexibility when it comes to being able to store your content and your documents. So let's just jump in and take a look at the actual physical attributes, then we'll go into the software. But I highly recommend storage solutions like this, super easy to use, and it's something that many of us overlook. And there's so much of our lives that is digital now that you really have to think about digital backups. Now at first glance, this is a very compact solution. I would say that it's probably the size of a toaster. Think about a, a traditional toaster. I'm gonna put my hand on top of it so you can see how small this is. And we'll start on the bottom first so you can see what's going on here. This is where you have access to be able to add some NVMEs. And these are gonna help with access speeds. You can see this right here. And the cool thing about this is that all of what I'm showing you right now is toolless. I didn't use a screwdriver to uh, put this in at all. It just snaps in and locks into place without any kind of tools, which I think is super duper cool. And you can see how I'm just closing this up. Now in the back here, let's look at see what's going on in the back. You have your ethernet ports, you have your power. This USB-C that you see here is used to connect to that station, additional external storage capacity to get you up to that 140 terabytes if that's something that you wanna do. But again, you, you can see that you have that connectivity and power. Now it's using a non, well, a proprietary connector here. It's not using USB-C, it's not using you know, some of the small uh, pins uh, when it comes to powering. But what I will say, that the solution is very quiet. It's very, very quiet. Now let's look at the front. From the front, you do have a USB um, access that you can have. 
you have the power, you have the drive activity taking place here. And watch this, this is how easy this thing is to actually uh, remove the drives. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove one drive and I'm gonna remove the second drive. Uh, it's, it's that simple, right? If you wanna put it back, all you do is you put it in like this and you close it. Nothing else has to be done. When you take a look at the drives themselves, uh, these are four uh, terabyte drives. So I have eight terabytes in total here. And again, these are Synology drives and these were toolless as well. If I wanna remove these, all I have to do is take this out. Let me go ahead and stick my fingernail here. Okay, let me go ahead and pop this out. All right, so all I have to do to pop this out is grab it right here, grabs this side, grab this side. We'll do the same thing over here. And now this drive, check this out, comes out. No screws required, no screwdriver required. If I wanna put it back into place, all I have to do is take this. This has kind of like some little pins that go in here. Align it with uh, this area and push this in, right? And once that's in place, I can slide it back um, into the actual drive bay, right? So we'll just snap that in on each side and that's that one's in. This one's in, and now this is ready to go back in the drive. Now putting it back in the drive is pretty simple. Make sure that this is open. We'll slide this in, and you're closing it, and that's all there is to it. It can't be any easier. And keep in mind that while I have a traditional uh, drive here, um, I could put in this one of those really small solid state drives as well, and it's gonna perform and it's as easy to implement as what you saw right here. Go ahead and open this up and just put this back in, close it in, and you're set to go. It's that easy. So to set a process, uh, as I said, you know, the Synology implementation is probably one of the easiest implementations when it comes to setting up a NAS. If you are a beginner or you're an expert, you can choose the type of experience you want to have. And we saw that through all the selection options that we saw during the actual setup. Uh, this is very graphic intensive, which I like. I don't mean this as a negative, but as a positive, the fact that things are so easy and visual. And, you know, just the setup process is pretty much effortless. <laughs> I took my time because I was just recording screens, but this is one of the easiest um, NAS solutions that you can have given the uh, actual implementation, the navigation, and the workflow. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is as you're clicking around in each one of the sections, because this is the first time we're navigating through the software to the install, it's going to, you know, pretty much walk you through or give you hints of what each one of these features are so that you understand, uh, again, how to use it. And really like that touch uh, that you, we saw, especially as we were clicking on some of these guys over here. Uh, so uh, really good information to help you with your setup process. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of things that you can do. In my case, I'm just gonna be using this for storage purposes, uh, but I typically sync with a cloud solution, or for example, um, you can install a Plex server on these. I actually have on one of my uh, legacy Synology drives that I've had for like ever, I have a, a Plex server on there. And Plex is a media solution that allows you to put or offload all of your videos, all your photos. Think about all the things that you take and you may have on your phone or somewhere, but you never really visit it again because you don't really have a way to view it. Uh, that's what I use Plex for. So let's start taking a look and just navigating through some of the aspects here. So basically you have a really nice UI, which is very graphical in nature, making it really easy for uh, expert or beginner to use the system. So what you can do here is, and, I'm, and again, you're gonna see a lot of prompts throughout this whole process because I'm walking through my initial setup with you guys. So here basically what you have are applications. It's an app store for all the things that you can do. So you notice you can, there's backup solutions, there's also antivirus solutions, there's audio solutions, there's video solutions, all these things that you can do. And the cool thing is that, you know, this is gonna keep your drive, your NAS solution up to date um, as you're, again, as you're, as you're using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and update all of these uh, components uh, so that it's up and current. But there's a lot that you can install. Again, my primary use, um, obviously because of all the video that I'm doing, is I use these drives to back up our video, our data. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue to do this. And one more time. 
And I also do synchronization. Um, I use this for synchronizing both online and offline storage just so that I can have a, you know, a redundancy when it comes to my backup solutions. So I have physical redundancy in the drives, but then I also have online redundancy of that which I have physical in the event that something were to happen to my home. Now something to take a look at, let's go ahead and open up the file station just for a second so you can see what's going on here. So here we have, um, again, our drives. And what you can do here is you can actually, I'm gonna go ahead and create kind of like a folder just so that we can see the overall performance of the drive. Uh, remember, we have two, uh, I think it's two terabyte, two, two terabyte drives in there, and those are physical drives. And then I have the actual NVMe, which is going to be just for rapid caching um, and those type of activities. Now, the other thing that I'll mention is that you don't have to use solid state or uh, physical drives in the form of having rotating disks. You can also use an SSD if you want it as well, which is something that I'll probably look at a little bit later, switching those out with something that's solid state just to get a performance boost. Now, one of the things I just wanted to show you is the overall performance and I deal with really large files. I do a lot of videos, right? So you can see uh, here's a review that we just recently completed for Ceramonic. Um, here's another one, uh, unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy Fold. And you can see my, my files are seven gigs, three gigs, two gigs, they're, they're pretty large. So I'm gonna grab first this 2.63 gig file and I'm gonna drag, drag it over here. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and just drop it over here. So I'm going to go ahead and say overwrite. And what you'll notice is on the upper right hand corner, you'll notice that the drive is being um, updated, right? So right now we have the file on upload queue. So here you can see the actual file going through. Now keep in mind that there's a couple of things. Now while my network is gigabit and I still have to think about the wireless nature of the device that I'm sending it to. So I have, um, all of my machines um, are connected wirelessly and I'm actually using a, uh, what is it, a Mac uh, Ultra, uh, the desktop that I'm using uh, as my editor and also what I'm running the software on right now. So what you see is this file just being transferred over. Now keep in mind that I could have this connected um, at the drive level, not going through the browsers I'm going through right here and I could uh, transfer over the file that way as well. And sometimes I find that uh, not using the browser-based solution, uh, if I go direct, seems to be a little bit faster. I don't know if that is kind of like placebo effect or, or what it could be, but just wanted to show you, you know, just the transfer process. This is a pretty big file, and there's going to be a lot of con contributing um, speed uh, challenges, at least for me, because of where I am in, in my home and then where, uh, where we connect to the network. So guys, that wraps up our review of the Synology DS725. Super easy to use and super convenient too. The next video.